So, I can certainly understand if you feel a little worn out by the end of this lesson. The basics of computer decision making are important, but may not seem super exciting to you yet. So, I kind of wanted to give you a sense of where this all goes, right? Like, what's at the end of this? What if we make lots and lots and lots of, of small decisions? What kinds of things can we do? Um, and so one of the, you know, some of you may have heard about artificial intelligence. You'll read a little bit about this in the book Coders as we go through the semester and really not as much from a technical background, but more from a societal aspect. Um, but I wanted to kind of show you um, where one of the places this all goes and one of the things that we've trained computers to do in ways that can seem really almost miraculous, which is image classification and identification. You may have heard a little bit about this and you've probably seen this in action when you go to Google and you search for photos. You may wonder like, how does Google know that this is a picture of a cat? Does Google have like a whole army of you know, people that are in charge of just sitting there all day, like looking at photos and saying, cat, dog, you know, cat, cute dog, you know, uh, is that how it's done? And the answer is no, we've actually been able to teach computers how to do this. Um, so one example of, a, of, of an approach to this, and this is offered by Microsoft actually, Microsoft actually has a service where you can upload your own photos and they will do this type of image uh, classification and detection for you. And I want to, I, it, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll post the link. I actually think I did post the link, but I'll make sure the link is on the lesson if you want to check this out. Um, we're going to talk later in the semester. Part of the work that you're going to do on the machine project this semester is going to be figuring out how to use what's called an external API um, in order to do things as part of your program. Um, one of the coolest and fastest way to build cool things and powerful things and transformative things is to build on top of the work of others. And so, for example, Microsoft has been doing work in this area for a long time and they've come up with some really sophisticated approaches to the problem. So let's look at how this works. So uh, this is their uh, kind of demo page here. This, this jumps around for some reason, which is kind of annoying. Uh, but they have some demo photos here. Uh, I'm not going to click on the photo stock yet. That seems a little bit too strange. But um, so if I click on this, let's look at what we're seeing. So this is a photo. And then over here on the right side, this is information that the computer has extracted from this image. This was not done by a person. This was done by a computer program. And you'll see, you know, it actually is able to put together a reasonably accurate caption for this picture. This is all auto-generated. None of this was created by a human person, right? And it says a young man riding a skateboard, and it also gives you a confidence value. It's, it's fairly confident. These are between zero and one. In this case, it's fairly confident that this would be a good caption for this picture. And if you look at the photo, um, that's, you know, that's pretty much what it is. It actually uh, has, and here's a list of tags, right? One of them is kickflip. Another is um, skateboarder, riding, skiing. You know, it's a little off there. So again, you can tell this is a computer. It's not perfect. Uh, board sport, that's fair. Um, snowboarding, you know, could be. It's hard to tell, right? I mean, obviously for us that can see the wheels, we know that this isn't a snowboard. Um, so these algorithms are, and these approaches are far from perfect. But it's kind of incredible that we've been able to train machines to do this at all, right? They can sort of see, um, they can sort of interpret a photo to the point where, again, it can auto-generate a reasonable caption for that picture. Uh, let's look at one of the other ones here, right? So what is the caption for this one? A group of people sitting at a table using a laptop. Yeah, pretty good, right? That's actually pretty high confidence. Uh, what about this one? This one's a little strange. This is sort of like a, a still life, right? The caption is, a vase of flowers sitting on top of a wooden table. Okay, you know, you could probably come up with a number of different captions for this. But, but why are we talking about this in the lesson on conditionals, right? Um, the reason is because, and I'm certainly not going to be able to explain this in a couple of minutes, but the way that this is actually done, the modern approach to doing this, is by essentially aggregating the results of millions and millions and millions of tiny decisions that are made by little, so essentially you can think of the computer as looking at little bits and pieces of the photo to begin with, and then it makes some decisions about what might be where, and then it goes up a level and it kind of combines those decisions together to start to see patterns and things like this. Um, so, you know, the machine learning algorithms that go into building these are incredibly sophisticated, but at their base, they're really based on the same type of Boolean, you know, 
true or false type decision making that we've been showing you today. So this is where all this goes. You take this and you sort of multiply it by a factor of a billion and you combine lots and lots and lots of these tiny decisions together. And if you do that in a sophisticated way, you can actually do things as sophisticated and as kind of awe-inspiring as automatically generate a caption for a photo.